thank you for the opportunity to uh, share with you uh, God's Word, to reflect and rejoice on God's Word. And today we're going to be turning to Colossians chapter 1, uh, verses 1 and 2. The letter of Colossians chapter 1, uh, verses 1 and 2. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brothers in Christ at Colossae, grace to you and peace from God our Father. And this is the word of the Lord. I was reading through the book of Colossians a couple of weeks ago and, and a little phrase almost jumped out of the page at me. It's, it's there in verse 2. In Christ at Colossae, it says. In Christ at Colossae. When we're reading through the, the New Testament and particularly the letters of Paul, we can sometimes be guilty of, of rushing past these opening few verses. We think to ourselves, that's the introduction. Let, let's get past the formalities and let's get to the, the real meat of the letter. But this little phrase in Colossians 1 and 2 is really helpful for us to think about. What does it say to us? Well, firstly, it reminds us that we're in Christ. We're in Christ. In fact, that's the Apostle Paul's favourite way of describing Christians. We're, we're in Christ. What does that mean? Well, it's a wonderful truth for us to reflect and rejoice in. According to Colossians, it means our faith rests on Jesus, the, the eternal Son of God. Through his gospel, his life, his death, his resurrection, we, we have been delivered from darkness and, and transferred into his kingdom. We read that in chapter 1 and Verse 13 and in chapter 1 and, and verse 14, it, we're reminded that we have redemption through Christ. We have forgiveness of sins because Christ died for us. But more than that, chapters 2 and 3 of Colossians tells us that we also have new life in Christ. Not just forgiveness, not just redemption, but we have new life in Christ. Eternal life, a life that wants to, to please God, a life that's reliant on God in prayer. Yes, it's true, we're still sinful. But as this new life begins to take shape, we, we will be characterised by compassion and kindness and humility and meekness and patience and forgiveness and love and thankfulness. This, this is what it means for us to be in Christ. Of course, there's so much more I could say about that. It's, it's a wonderful truth for us to consider. It definitely is something for us to reflect and rejoice in. If you're watching today and you're a Christian, then, then this describes you. You're in Christ. Praise God for that. That's a wonderful truth to consider. But our little phrase says more than that, doesn't it? Yes, they were in Christ, but they were also at Colossae. In Christ, at Colossae. Colossae was a, an average sized town in the ancient world, not too big, not too small. We're told that its glory days were behind it. One, other towns around it were bigger, they were more prosperous, more important, more powerful, more influential. One person I read said this, but by the first century Colossae was diminished to a second rate town. It had been surpassed long ago in power and importance by the neighbouring towns of Laodicea and Hierapolis. Not only that, but we're told that it was a town where people believed anything and, and in fact believed everything. But that's where they lived. That's where many of them were born and, and grew up. That's where many of them called home. That, that, that's where they were called to live out their faith in Jesus Christ. This is where they were called, uh, according to chapter 3 and verse 24, to serve the Lord Jesus. They're in Christ at Colossae. Dare I say it, but first century Colossae sounds a little bit like Grimsby, doesn't it? Not too big, not too small. Some people might call it a second rate town. I've even heard people in Grimsby call it that. Its glory days are behind it. And it'd be fair to say as well that it's a place where people believe anything and believe everything. But Grimsby is where you live. 
Grimsby is where some of you were born and grew up. Grimsby is where you called home. Grimsby is where God, God has called you to, to live out your faith in Jesus, to serve him. You're in Christ at Grimsby. According to Colossians 4, verses 5 and 6, it's in Grimsby that you've been called to walk in wisdom towards outsiders. It's in Grimsby that you've been called to speak graciously to those that you bump into on the street. It's in Grimsby that you've been called to answer the questions of family and friends and neighbours and colleagues when they ask you about your Christian faith. You're in Christ, but you're at Grimsby. And that too is something to reflect on. And yes, even to rejoice in. And I do trust that as you reflect and as you rejoice, the Lord will strengthen your faith. He'll give you the needed help to live for him, to live for him where he has placed you. Remember today and in the week ahead, you're, you're in Christ. Praise God for that. But you're in and you're at Grimsby. May God speak to you through his word. Amen. <laughs>